Ross to determine expansion and entry draft. First of all, we want to talk about Ottawa. Bruce, uh, are you close to hiring a coach? Well, we've interviewed a number of uh, coaches and uh, a lot of good coaching candidates out there. We're having a devil of time making up uh, our mind which one we want to take. How soon do you think it might be a decision for you? Well, we'd like to have a coach in place for uh, the entry draft, and uh, that's our goal right now. Be interested in hearing how the interest is. Of course, we know hockey's popular in Canada, but how are things progressing for you? Well, things went very well. The fans in Ottawa have been really uh, just crazy about NHL hockey, and uh, we sold out our, our season's tickets, a little over 10,000 season's tickets in about 10 days, so we were really happy with that. Let's turn to Phil Esposito. I know Phil has been involved in a lot of production and a lot of promotion down in the Tampa Bay area. Tell us about the interest there and how things are right now. Well, last week we had uh, what we call a select a seat weekend and uh, did very, very well. People came in, saw the arena, sat down, and every seat was a good sight line. Uh, um, it's like Ottawa is doing and like San Jose has done. We're playing in a 10,400-seat arena. It's going to be great for the first couple of years, and everybody was very happy. We're about 4,300 now, season tickets. We're not at 10,000 like Bruce was in 10 days, but we hope by the time the season starts, we'll be about 75, 8,000. That's, that's what we're looking for. We want to get a quick look at that jersey before oh, yes. our time is up here. Enjoy. Turn it around now. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish this was my brother or me uh, if we were younger. Show the special facet, the underarm. Oh. See that underarm thing there? I hope we get to see that an awful lot for celebration. <laughs> That's right. All the best. Playing in the month of June will certainly be one to remember for Pittsburgh Penguin fans. Monday, the team that many had written off earlier in the season completed an improbable trip back to the conference finals. Actually, the championship finals. And the Pittsburgh Penguins skated away with their second straight Stanley Cup trophy. Just like they did a year ago, the Pens won it on the road. A sweep of the Chicago Blackhawks. This game was fit to be tied. A one-all tie in the first period is broken when Kevin Stevens finds the Nets. Two 2-2 tie is broken in the first as Mario Lemieux nets the rebound for his 16th playoff goal. 3-2 pins. But Dirk Graham would tie it up for Chicago later in the first. Already scored two goals. That's a natural hat trick three in the same period. The game was stopped for 10 minutes as they got rid of the hats. A four-all tie in the third period is broken when Larry Murphy's shot floats into the top of the corner of the net. 5-4 Penguins, they would add another and hang on for a 6-5 victory. They're the 16th team to sweep a best-of-seven final since 1983. The Pens end the year on an impressive 11-game playoff winning streak. Anytime you can run off a victory streak like that, it's obviously saying something about the collective, the collective unit. We've got a tremendous team here. I hope we're able to stay together. Uh, and I hope we're able to give our, our cup uh, a serious defense next year like we have this year. We've had gone through a lot of adversity, and uh, to win it, these guys won it second, second time was amazing. And for me, it's my first. And uh, these guys are talking dynasty. That's what I, I, I want to be a part of because they're talking dynasty. It was deja vu in Pittsburgh Monday night shortly after the Penguins clinched the cup. Last year's championship victory came on a Saturday night. Fishing off Sandy Alomar. That brought Alomar onto the field at a gallop, and he kicked Doherty right in the tummy. Benches emptied, lots of pushing and shoving, but no serious injuries were reported. And watch the manager here. Sparky Anderson said, don't you touch me. Blank, don't you touch me. Same teams tonight in Detroit. Frank Tanana will of the National Hockey League. Talked about uh, feeling uh, more gratitude and not regret. I was running through his heart today. And uh, he used the phrase, I am distinctly privileged to have held one of the most cherished positions in the professional sports world. Well, Ziegler didn't show up at the news conference, and for good reason. The league ate the rest of his contract and bought him out for reportedly more than $2 million. Ziegler's presidency lasted 15 years, but in reality, he didn't have very much clout. The Board of Governors did, and now that they've reached the conclusion hockey needs a new direction, a couple of options exist. First, will the new man be someone on the inside who takes orders from the board again, or will they venture out, go after new blood, and give the new commissioner real power to be innovative 
and market a league that's got a long way to go to becoming major stopwatches. League. Two recently scuttled skippers lashed themselves to the masts again on Monday. Paul Holmgren was dumped by the Flyers about six months ago. He becomes the Hartford Whalers' third coach in three years. Rick Bonus was fired after one season in Boston. He takes the job with the Ottawa Senators with the expansion draft coming up on Thursday. Uh, yes, uh, they come and they go, lasting in their jobs only slightly longer than their names appear on this screen. Eight coaches have either quit or been fired in the two weeks since the playoffs ended. Three of them have found jobs with other teams already, and there may be more changes to come with Scotty Bowman's status in Pittsburgh undecided. If you're an NHL coach, don't bring what you can't pack quickly, and you might want to consider renting instead of getting into a messy mortgage. Oilers new GM Brian Burke had a busy day. After introducing Holmgren, he gets tough guy Nick Kiprios from Washington. Mark Hunter joins brother Dale with the Caps. Hartford also sends Brad Shaw to New Jersey for future considerations. Toronto trades for Brad Marsh and Yarmo Millis. The Red Wings and Sharks get future considerations. Winnipeg sends Stefan Borg, who is also in ignominious company, now as one of the cities which have seen celebration turn to violence. Fans who cheered their heroes during the game ignored their pleas afterwards, strengthening the argument that even superstars cannot be expected to right the wrongs of society. Criticisms of Michael Jordan must begin outside the lines because on the court he is establishing greatest of all time type credentials. Self-appointed sociologists unable to deflate Jordan's on-court image said this season that he wasn't having a profound enough influence on folks in the inner city. Turns out they don't listen to him much anyway. We want to win it in Chicago, but we certainly don't want to, you know, endorse crime or, or you know, enlightening or whatever. But we just want to keep it at a minimum and more or less, you know, let's just enjoy ourselves, but let's not tear up the city. It's our city. More than 1,000 people were arrested in mob mentality lawlessness after the Bulls won the title. They flipped two taxi cabs. They looted stores in a wave of violence that stretched from the south side to fashionable Michigan Avenue. They set fire to stores. Two people were critically burned. When people have an excuse to loot, they loot. If people have an excuse to shoot, they shoot. The violence taints the memory of a gargantuan final effort, a record comeback from 15 down in the fourth to clinch that left Phil Jackson bridging the artistic gap between the Grateful Dead and Homer. It certainly has been a long, strange trip this year. It's a hundred and some games for us. Last year was a honeymoon. This year was an odyssey. Jordan must be... ...all around about a trade involving Eric Lindros Last year's number one pick by Quebec, who sat out last season. Among the teams mentioned, the Flyers, the Blackhawks, and even the Rangers. The expansion clubs chose first, with the Tampa Bay Lightning selecting Roman Hammerlech from Czechoslovakia. Ottawa went with a player from Moscow Dynamo. And as you might expect on draft day, a trade. The Washington Capitals sending winger Dino Cicerelli to Detroit in exchange for center Kevin Miller. Cicerelli is hooked up with his former coach, Brian Murray, while Miller will join his brother Kelly, already with the Caps. Roman Hammerlick. There is young Roman Hammerlick, 18 years old, defenseman, 6'2", 189. He says he sees no problem getting out of his current contract in Czechoslovakia. He wants to play right away in the NHL. For the first time in league history, the first two picks are non-North Americans. After Tampa picked Hammerlick, the Ottawa Senators went with a Russian centerman, 6'2", Alexei Yashin still looms over the NHL. According to reports on WIP Radio in Philadelphia, the latest word is that the Quebec Nordiques, Philadelphia Flyers, and New York Rangers have agreed to let an arbitrator decide which team will get the rights to Lindros. The situation arose after the Flyers claimed they had a deal worked out with the Nordiques for Lindros. Chris? The Angels trying to avoid... Kevin Miller to the Caps for Dino Cicerelli. Cicerelli had a pretty decent season in 92. He scored 38 goals, added 38 assists in 78 games for the Caps. The Wings will be his third NHL. Of the mysterious eventual whereabouts of last year's top pick, man-child Eric Lindros. You know, he's bypassed millions. He doesn't want to play in Quebec, so the bidding for his sizable talents is wide open, and the latest rumored trades involve Philly, and this is the huge controversy brewing. Apparently, the Nordiques have okayed two deals with two teams, as I mentioned, the Philadelphia Flyers and the New York Rangers, while the controversy involves the, the apparent first deal with the Flyers. But uh, Michelle Obu and, and the Nordiques apparently got a better offer from the New York Rangers, so they accepted the Rangers' offer. So now it will all go to arbitration and will be decided very soon. John Ziegler resigns, 
and no sooner does he resign than he has another controversy to deal with. Okay, but we do know the identity of Lindros' successor. The expansion Tampa Bay Lightning opting to build on defense takes Czech defenseman Roman Hamerlik, the 6'290 pounder, only 18, has already played two years in Czechoslovakia's top league. He's just the second European taken in the first round overall. Here are the next four picks. Number two is Alexei Yushin. The centerman goes uh, to the other expansion club. Uh, the uh, Ottawa Senators, then San Jose steps up and takes Mike Raji. The Quebec Nordiques, the arbitrator tries to decide where hockey superstar and waiting Eric Lindros will play. Representatives from the Quebec Nordiques, Philadelphia Flyers, and New York Rangers will continue meeting with arbitrator Larry Bertuzzi of Toronto. The shit is have won the Eric Lindros sweepstakes. We'll fill you in on all the details in just a moment. the Big Apple on Tuesday, at least at the offices of the New York Rangers. That's when they found out they will not be getting the services of Eric Lindros, which meant the NHL's most coveted newcomer was headed to Philly. Those are the headlines. Jack Edwards has the details. It is W.C. Fields' epitaph. It is the beginning of Eric Lindros' NHL career. On the whole, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. All I can say now is I'm a Philadelphia Flyer, um, and I'm not going to move from Philadelphia. The deal is all for one and one for all. Quebec gets goalie Ron Hextall, centers Mike Ricci and Peter Forsberg, who played last year in Sweden, defensemen Steve Duchesne and Kerry Huffman, the Flyers' first round pick in 1993, future considerations equal to the Flyers' first round pick this year, number seven overall, those considerations are to be worked out by July 17th, and $15 million. It may look as if the Flyers have traded the whole team to get a franchise player, but they do return their top three scorers. We decided that we had to have something left. We had to have something to build around, although we're bringing in what we consider to be a potential superstar, a guy who I believe will change the game. He's also 19 years old, and we don't expect him to come here and play by himself. It is Lindros' willingness to use his 6-foot-5-inch, 228-pound frame combined with a scoring touch seldom seen in such physical players that made him the center of a year-long bidding war. While Lindros played for the Canadian Olympic team, the Nordiques told interested NHL clubs that they could not talk contract with Lindros until they had made the trade. The Flyers, not the Rangers, got Lindros because Quebec gave Philadelphia permission to talk to Lindros on the phone before saying that the deal was off, that the trade was with New York. I find that Philadelphia made an enforceable deal with Quebec with respect to Lindros subject to a condition which existed for its benefit. So now the Flyers have traded five players, one and maybe more first round picks, and 15 million bucks, all that so they can begin to negotiate with hockey's next superstar. But the kid says the Flyers won't have to empty the vault the way Quebec was willing to. I was offered 55 million over 10. I don't need it. I mean, that's unreasonable. Is your objective to be the highest paid player no. in the league? No, my objective is to, be, is to be paid where I feel I fit in. Those who have been around say Lindros has been worth waiting for. There, there's no comparison between this boy and Wayne Gretzky or Mario Lemieux or anybody. He's, he proved at 18 that he was one of the top players in the world. And he'll continue to improve and then he'll continue to prove that he's one of the best players in the world. Now with the addition of Lindros, the Patrick division might as well be renamed the Hattrick division because that's what you're going to see more of this season. The back, yeah, yeah. He got a two-minute penalty, and they scored, and we ended up losing. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. But uh, uh, a little reminder, yeah. as you said. But that is the way it works. You, well, you, you remember stuff like that, and they got to take care of you because you're uh, one of the highest producers well, on, the, on the line there. Whether we like it or not, intimidation is part of yeah. professional sports. Yeah. And, and uh, you, you try to establish yourself and not give an inch. Yeah, the same is true for here, by the way, this show. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wayne, let me, uh, now, a couple of years ago when you came in, uh, I think it might have been the first year that the New Jersey Devils became a franchise. They, mm -hmm. came, they were the Colorado Rockies, I believe, uh -huh. and they came to New Jersey. You had some things to say about the organization. You, what did you say about the Devils? Well, uh, I said some words that uh, I regret. I called them uh, a Mickey Mouse organization, but... Uh, you know, we've all made mistakes in Absolutely. life, and uh, it was a mistake that I made. I, I just hope they start winning, because I think New Jersey's a good hockey city, and I'd like to see them stay. Yeah, now... now <laughs> That's Minnie and Goofy up there. <laughs> um, Speaking of hockey, before I forget, Marv had asked me if I would give this oh, to you. Oh, these wanted, damn things. I'm so tired of these things. <laughs> Mar Marv Albert's brother, he, he can't get a job in sports casting, so he's, he's marketing these damn chocolate hockey pucks. And 
And I'm telling you, don't buy them. They'll rot your teeth. It's inferior stuff. Just forget this uh, hockey puck here. Thank you. <laughs> Now, what was I going to... Oh, I was going to ask you about... Uh, uh, now, why did you call them a Mickey Mouse organization? What Were you angry with them? Well, I was angry at the fact that uh, we had beat them, I think, 13 or 14 to 3 that evening. And uh, a teammate of mine was the goaltender, Ronnie Lowe, and, and he, we had unfortunately traded him to New Jersey. And he was in the net stopping all these pucks and letting some of them go by. Yeah. And he kept kind of digging them out, like yeah. this sort of thing. And I felt badly for him, and I even kind of hid in the trainer's room for 20 or 25 minutes and I still, I came out and I cooled off, but uh, things get blown out sure, of proportion yeah. a little bit. But that, you know, for a goalie, I'm thinking that that's really indignation, that's real humiliation. You're scored on, not only do you have the embarrassment of knowing that your team is now maybe down a goal or two, but then the goalie has to take the evidence yeah. of his failure out of the net and throw it away. It's pretty embarrassing. It yeah, and, and return it here. Try it again, boys. Um, now, you, you uh, came into Major League Hockey uh, mm -hmm. through the WHA, yeah. and I think you started out with uh, a team in my old hometown, in the Indianapolis, yeah, Indianapolis uh, Racers. The Indianapolis Racers. How long were you there? I was there for uh, three months, and uh, the team owner at that time uh, sold me to Edmonton when I was, I was 17. I was going to high school playing professional hockey, and... Uh, it's a great city, and I hope they get a franchise there someday in the NHL. They have the checkers now, I think, in the... Uh, in the Central Hockey League. Yeah, it's an, it's an outdoor league, I think. <laughs> play, play all of their games outside. Uh, <laughs> and you also... Now, this is great. I think you are the only guest we've ever had on the show, Wayne, who has his own breakfast cereal. <laughs> There's a box of it right there. We apparently can't show the name of it. What the heck is the name of it? It's, uh, it's the no-sugar-added Wayne Gretzky generic breakfast cereal. <laughs> what, what do they call this stuff? Pro Stars. Pro Stars. Why did we have to cross out Pro Stars? We want to take it easy. <laughs> we wanted to take it easy. Now, uh... <laughs> it's good cereal. <laughs> I'm sure it is good cereal. Yeah, and you probably eat this every day. Every morning. I'm a morning person. I, I enjoy my cereal. Let's see what this stuff looks like. It's good. Believe me, it's very good. And they're little, they're shaped like stars. Actually, it would be funny for hockey players, they, they should be shaped like teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know. All right, now, Wayne, uh, the Wayne Gretzky Fan Club. Uh -huh. How much do you uh, spend to get into the fan club? Let's see. Uh, seven bucks. Seven dollars. That, that's about uh, seven dollars, and it's about two dollars American. Two dollars American? Here's what you get. Picture of Wayne. Very nice. How's the young Wayne Open Gretzky? Some more photos of Wayne. Now, that's the same picture, just different outfits, isn't it? <laughs> different. That's why I, want, the, that's the why I wanted to be a baseball player. Yeah. All right. And what else do you get here? You get uh, more photos. Unbelievable. On and on and on and on and on. You know, we were talking about your career this afternoon, and, and I think the stunning thing about it is you're only 25 years old. You've been playing, what, six and a half seasons now? Mm -hmm. You're 25 years old. Do you feel like you're now at the peak of your game? Do you feel like you're still striving toward the peak, or...? Well, I hope to uh, to get better as a hockey player. I think that uh, the team that I play with is very talented, and we all work together very well. But I have to be realistic that I've had some good years behind me, and uh, maybe I won't top what has what has gone on in the past. Uh, I'm not a great traveler, and I'm being an Edmonton. You hate to fly, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm very uh, very bad at traveling. Yeah. I, don't like, I don't like to fly. But uh, hopefully that doesn't interfere with my career. Yeah, that would be too bad. Uh, but I know the feeling. I'm not crazy about it myself. Well, I've been watching. You guys yeah. have been flying down it's south. Tough. It's tough. It's yeah. tough. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, did, is, has there been one game recently when you said to yourself, my God, this may have been the greatest hockey game I've ever played? Or, or have you not come to that point yet? Well, I guess as, uh, we all have pride, and we like to say that every game we played was our best. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I think that... Uh, the year that I scored the 92 goals uh, that I set the That's record, I don't, I don't think that I've played much better than that, yeah. and things went pretty well yeah. for me that year. Nice to see you. Take Thank it easy on the much. Islanders. Thank you. Wayne Gretzky, ladies and gentlemen.